wheels, they are round. But it's not quite as simple as that because for decades, people and companies have been trying to literally reinvent them. So today, here are five of my favorite cool and quirky wheel designs and you're gonna absolutely love them. Spinergies. I'm gonna start off with one of the biggest revelations in wheel design during my lifetime. So the company Spinergy was founded back in the early 90s by Raf Schlanger and on first look, these actually look like a pair of four-spoke carbon monocoque wheels. When in actual fact, turn them around and there's eight separate carbon spokes in there, or blades if you like, but more on that later. Now the actual blades of carbon or the spokes are connected onto the rim here. And as you can see, there are some small rivets which pass through them, a kind of reinforcement if you like, to stop them from coming apart from one another. And another bit of reinforcement that the Revex Spinergy wheels actually had was something called X-beams. And they were kind of little fillers, if you like, that went in between the blades of carbon to try and stiffen them up a little bit. So sprinters like Mario Cipollini, they would put them in between there, these little plastic wedges, and it would prevent the spokes from flexing inwards just like that. Now sadly, the wheels went into decline, partly due to the fact that if one of the carbon blades was to fail, the rest of the wheel really did suffer, and the wheel looked like a jelly on a plate because it was wobbling around inside of the frame. Now the other reason is because the UCI, so the governing body of cycle racing in the world, actually outlawed them from use in competition. Now allegedly a couple of injuries or crash related injuries were actually worsened due to the carbon blades. Now again that is an allegation made out there by a couple of riders back in the 90s or 2000s sorry, uh, but yeah, sadly we don't see them used anymore in competition. This particular pair actually belonged to Magnus Backstead, the 2004 Paris-Roubaix winner, good buddy of mine. He loaned them to me specifically for this feature and he actually still does ride on them from time to time and he reckons they're still as fast as modern day wheels. Who am I to disagree? He's a big old guy, is Maggie. One of my favourite memories about racing on Spinergy wheels was the sound they made. When they went up to speed, it was almost like a helicopter's propellers or rotor, if you like. So, yes, Spinergy's one of my favourites. The year is 1992. Boys to Men and the song End of the Road was the Billboard's most popular song. But something that wasn't the end of the road was this, the Mavic 3G Tri-Spoke, undoubtedly made most popular by Chris Boardman taking the gold medal at the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. Now with a striking appearance of three profiled carbon spokes, this wheel made a huge impact on my life as a 12 year old boy because the day after Boardman took that gold medal at Barcelona, it was on the front cover of every single newspaper in Great Britain. What about the wheel though? Well, first up, rim width, just 18 millimeters. Because you'd be using an 18 millimeter tubular tire on this, 20 at the most I'd imagine. And then the rim depth too. 52 millimeters. This was the cutting edge high tech of technology back in the early 90s. But what made it so special? Well, it was the fact that this could be used front and rear, road and track. But how, I may well hear you ask. Well, you could actually remove the hub internals by using an old bottom bracket tool, slide out that hub from the hub shell, and then put in basically some internals of your choice. So you could have a threaded, uh, freewheel like what we've got on here at the moment. You could have a threaded track hub in there and also if you're really lucky you could get yourself a cassette hub version too although those are really hard to find. I still do look for them at a bargain price online. Not to mention then you could put a front wheel in there too. This for me is one of the best wheel designs there's ever been and I'm not surprised actually they discontinued it because well you're not going to sell very many of them are you because it's such a versatile wheel. I love it. And no, it's not for sale. How about this then? Nope, it's not an optical illusion. This is the M5 two-spoke wheel. Now sadly, I don't have my hands on one, but when I first saw a picture of one online, I was convinced it was an optical illusion of some sort because, well, I didn't see how it would work. But some digging around, and in actual fact, they are UCI legal, and they hail from the Netherlands, and this wheel certainly got something to shout about. 
Now, the two-spoke wheel was initially first seen way back in 1987, which, well, I find really difficult to believe, but yeah, it did happen. Fast forward 21 years, and it was being used in the Tour de France during time trials, even with disc brakes. Also, Rio Olympics back in 2016, I did in fact see some riders using those on the track as well as on the road time trial. Now, I guess if you're being really nitpicky, you could say it was a rim with a one spoke going through it. But this wheel itself actually has a super reinforcement structure built within it because it doesn't have the usual structure of a standard wheel, let's face it. But this doesn't actually come at the detriment of aerodynamics. And apparently they're even more aerodynamic than all existing three, four, five spoke wheels as well as disc wheels on the market there. So it's a big old claim to make, but they do in fact have the data to back that up. But they're not just a flash in the pan either because they've got tubular versions, clincher versions, disc brake versions, rim brake versions. So I would love to see more radical designs like this entering the market. A chameleon that you and I know has the ability to change its color or appearance to match its surroundings. Now presumably that's the inspiration behind the name of this wheel, the Revolver Chameleon. So it's a carbon fiber deep section wheel that can be converted into a lenticular shaped disc wheel. But how exactly? Well, as you can see here, I've already got one of the carbon sheets or discs if you prefer, fitted onto the drive side really neatly because they use Velcro pads to attach them onto the drive side spokes. Now, each of these Velcro pads actually has a two kilogram holding capability, so it's pretty strong stuff. And then the non-drive side disc actually slides and then is held into place on the hub shelf using a lock ring. So essentially you're getting two wheels for, well, almost the price of one. But something to consider here is actually the legal use of them in competition for whatever you're taking part in. So actually check that out within the rules of those contests. But I think this is a really fantastic bit of innovation. Love it. Okay, not a wheel itself, but definitely a worthy inclusion to this video because this is the Bird Polylite spoke. Yep, this is a spoke. Now, they use the latest advancements in technology in the polymer industry, and they can create a spoke which weighs about two thirds less than a standard 1.8 millimeter butted spoke. So add that up over a 32 spoke wheel, you're saving an awful lot of weight. So they work with all standard rim and hub configurations because thanks to this integrated rod here within the end of the spoke that's got a thread on it, simply threads into the nipple at the rim. And then the eyelet on the other end of the polylite spoke goes into the hub shell and then you use another rod which is coated in polylite to hold it in place, almost like a wedge to prevent it from coming out of place. It's a totally different concept from normal and I think it's brilliant because these are so light. And when I showed them around the office a couple of days ago, everyone was saying, what is that? That can't be a spoke, but it is. And they work apparently just as well as your standard spoke. And according to Bird, they reckon they've got a longer lifespan than a standard steel spoke. So there we are, definitely worth including into this video. So there we are, some absolutely brilliant innovations from the world of wheels. But is there anything I forgot? Let me know in the comment section down below and maybe I'll be able to make a part two for this video. Don't forget to, to like and share it with a friend. Share it with a fellow wheel lover if you like. Also, don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got a whole heap of goodies for you to check out. And now for another cracking video, how about clicking just down here?